exhaust gas temperatures of any cylinder is the best way to start is the easy way and that I want always you have in mind you must first of all uh, see the easy way how you can solve a problem and then move on to the next step here as you can see we have a calibrator which is sent from Azure to us and I have taken to my cabin just I was curious to start from this one from the exhaust gas temperatures to set first in the 50 degrees Celsius and after 100, 150, 200 to see in different ranges how this uh, temperature gauges working thermometers how they're working how they conduct with the engine this is very very important to check in all ranges because also generator as we know at the start of the engine works about 10 to 25 percent this is also uh, the washing procedures of turbochargers as they done and also the best working conditions for the engine is on 75% of the maximum uh, output we have better flow of the exhaust gases we have better scavenging air pressure and this is the point that the, all the engines has been designed all engines have a effective load that they produce the maximum power output and have the less consumption per kilowatt or output power that produced as you can see uh, this kind of calibration take a lot of time and here also this video is in time-lapse mode it's really really quickly but normally this take about two or two or three hours to calibrate all the six temperature uh, indicators of the engine the most common problem is that these temperature gauges is not properly set uh, on the nest because there is a nest a metal nest which attached inside the exhaust manifold and if these parts together touch each other they will be damaged and the life of the thermo used so always be careful how you replace how you put your thermometers on the engine this is very very important and also have readings and have some history of the gauges so the next crew will know what is going on and we have one problem that the temperature of generator was increased in some uh, cylinders let's say cylinder three or five something like that and here you can see time lapse we remove the protection of uh, the exhaust manifold and as you can see here in four stroke engines there is two manifolds which coming from separate cylinders three to one two three and four five six is different this is here the cleaning nozzle for turbocharger as you can see the uh, yellow this is the sulfur which is accumulated on uh, this uh, injector nozzle and this is a gasket which uh, had a erosion through the temperature and the sulfur this is a copper made gasket and it attached here there is two different ways from the where the water is injected for the clinic of turbocharger and what we have determined we have determined that after removing the exhaust manifold pipe we have seen that the nozzle rings of a turbocharger was dirty and that was the cause of increased exhaust gas temperature even you will replace all your fuel valves and your temperature is still high exhaust gas the most common problem is the 
uh, this ring which will be cloaked by the combustion parts the smoke the ashes and through the washing through the washing and low load of the engine when the washing will be done uh, there is a slowly a built effect on these blades so the blades will become smaller and smaller and there is no way for the exhaust gases to pass and distribute to the turbocharger wheel exhaust wheel so if you see that your turbocharger exhaust is also coming up and you will see also some cylinders have increased temperature and you have already overhauled your fuel valves all the pressure is fine uh, there is a better way to take out the turbocharger this is the most easy way and most effective to see what is going on inside uh, these nozzle rings first of all i like to tell that before dismantle any piping it's better to make some pictures so to remember how all parts was going if you like a quick help for you also before you dismantle any spare parts first check of all that you have a new one never dismantle if you do not have a new one this is very very important also very important is to say that our engine is on standstill mode it's uh, isolated with air it's secured functionally the engine is depressurized and all safety precautions done always and every time so here you can see how the piping of exhaust goes to turbocharger nozzle ring F and through there there is a distribution the reason that we have two separate pipes is that we need a constant flow to the turbocharger wheel and here you can see we have all oh, we had also a crack that was good that we have opened these manifolds to check from inside because we like to remove the manifold and we like to look inside the cylinder heads and we determine this crack this is a support uh, metal which supports the manifold and that is good that we determine that problem that in the future we prevent any cracks on it manifold itself because all supports is the main work is to support the manifold and keep in straight condition there is also expansion joints as you can see here and also it's good practice also to have some of expansion joints two pieces or one piece if it's necessary for replacement in case that something happened also in all bolts we will apply molybdenum diesel feet which will keep the bolts more alive this is after we have removed the turbocharger itself there is a lot of protective uh, parts that you need to remove before removing of turbocharger and here you can see the nozzle ring which is clogged with sulfur and combustion uh, impurities that have accumulated also you need to check your uh, nozzle ring for any cracks mostly the cracks happens in outside area of the blade and through the washing process there is also a corrosion effect because with sulfur and water mixture we have uh, this acid we have strong acid and here also when we place everything back we check the nozzle rings how the water injects inside to the blades and how the water is passing and the quantity of water which is entered very important is to regulate your 
a water distributor and pressure regulator at proper flow because there is a flow indication on the piping and the pressure. This is very very and really really important. So before you make and you attempt any washing of your turbocharger you need to verify that all the quantities is proper and all the pressure is proper. Also I have the opportunity after we remove the turbocharger to insert the photo to check the air cooler before to see if there is any leakages of water and enter inside the engine and also I like to see the condition of air cooler to see how it looks like it if it looks like dirty or not just uh, for reference when we determine one problem we see exactly what is it and what is the cause of that problem so we'll be next time we'll be sure and we have built a experience of what is going on inside the engine first of all with this with this turbocharger there is a need of cleaning of the blades so there is accumulated sulfur on the blades on the inner parts and these blades we will be placed on the soap will not immerse totally because there is bearings inside and we do not like water to enter to the bearings just the blade will be lowered to the water and mixed with soap so the next day will be removed and everything will be removed also by the water all the impurities will be fell down never immersed all the turbocharger to the water because you will have corrosion to the bearings to the bearings that all these the floating bearings that have uh, the turbocharger equipment and th this here you can see the manifold it's removed already and you can see if your uh, valves your exhaust valves is closed attached or broken you can see everything from inside it's a little bit heavy that parts it maybe the weight is about 70 to 80 kilos but we use always chain blocks and we have the proper chain blocks that is calculate first we calculate the weight of the parts and then we use the appropriate lifting equipment also here we have this extended spare uh, this is uh, the special tool that we have to pull uh, the turbocharger outside it's a little bit difficult you need to have some place also you need to secure your ladder when you are uh, somewhere in a higher position and this is when the nozzle ring first is out also you can immerse in shop and wash it truly with the shop and leave it all the night inside so the next morning you will ask a oiler to clean it and assist you in any work it necessary for the officers everybody work is very important because the one will help each other and this is how it looks from the exhaust manifold the valves you can see if there is broken parts if your valves is in good condition or if you have any leakages through the spindle the valve spindle here we have repaired the support and there is a lot of supports that keep all these manifold in place also i like to tell you that before you overhaul all these parts of turbocharger the very good practice is to verify that your drains of uh, salt drain because there is a tank that collects any rain that falling down to the funnel to the exhaust funnel and there is piping that also can be stuck and what is going on if this piping will be stuck we always check that and always we have in mind all the rain will be accumulated inside the engine 
and also very good practice is if your engine is stand still about for a week and longer it's better evening before you left your engine room to make a air blow to see that everything is fine and there is not accumulation of moisture inside your engine so you'll be safe and your engine always will be ready for use also here i have seen in a lot of engine rooms i have seen some uh, parts that is missing by the time some engineers remove uh, the supports of the piping and slowly slowly it will be lost always remember when you overhaul something mark or make any photos so you will be able to place it as it was and we have also piping here we have in air cooler uh, drains this piping was made for the purpose that in tropical areas there is a lot of moisture accumulated inside the air cooler so this all water do not enter inside the engine and make damage to the valves and the valve seat itself must be drained from the engine the nozzle ring is cleaned and is placed back again and our turbocharger is ready for assembling. There is a one way that you can put your nozzle rings, there is not other way. Always have your drain clean and also here we have installed already our turbocharger. We have tied all the supports that keep the turbocharger in place and below the turbocharger base there is two o-ring which is better to replace always when you make any overhauling here there is a two bolts which tights on 400 how much 455 newtometers as you can see, always check the book for reference and the manuals that you tie it properly your turbocharger. Our nozzle ring again, it's clean, all the parts. Always remember that turbochargers are very, very precise machinery. And it's very important that the maintenance we do must be very, very careful. And some of overhaul, some of overhaulings will be uh, maintained by specialists. Here we have, we can see the compressor wheel, which is made by aluminium, some uh, alloys of aluminium, and also I have made some photos with cleaning procedure of the tubo charger. Also, I like to have a file to see how the turbocharger cleaning is done and what is the difference between each, each turbocharging uh, washing this is very very important as i have seen okay this is number one diesel generator I have taken off all the turbochargers there but i just like you to see all the parts and how it is if the turbocharger is missing here this this is the entrance to the air cooler of air this is the base where we have these two o-rings and where the turbocharger stands also lubrication passing from there and here We have our protection of the turbocharger. Always wear a mask when you use such uh, protection, when you maintain and you work with that protection. Here this is where the bolts are placed and our turbocharger is tight. There is a serial number label there 
on the bottom where you can see the serial number of turbocharger and here is where attached these nozzles water cleaning nozzles and sensors of the temperature also never rotate the compressor wheel here if your pre-lubricating pump is not running turn when your pump is running and you have lubrication to the bearings also we have the speed sensor there with the green wire I hope this video was interesting for you and had a lot of information so you will be able